section titled RFPSF, Zero Trust Radio Frequency Process Specific Functions as Process Distinction Matter. I am Mohammed Faisal Bari. I am a third year PhD student at Purdue University in the Department of Electrical Engineering. I am working with Professor Sriyash. Here is the outline of my presentation. First, I will talk about process variation in IC fabrication and the concept of RFPSF. Then I'll talk about zero trust architecture, which is the motivation behind this work. Next, I'll discuss our simulation methodology and data processing states. Later, I will show the performance of RFPSF and exploration of relevant design parameters. Finally, I'll conclude my presentation with a brief summary. Let us begin with process variation. Process variation is the deviation of different attributes of transistors and intercurrents during IC fabrication. No fabrication process is ideal, and process variation is part of every process. Semiconductor process variation is of two types. First, local variation or within die variation, which includes dopant fluctuation, channel length variation, thin thickness, etc. They are more random in nature and difficult to predict. So their good choice for RF fingerprinting that distinguishes different devices of the same class, such as 30 Zigbee devices. The second type of variation is the global variation that covers die-to-die -die variation, wafer-to-wafer -wafer variation, and lot-to-lot -lot variation. They are more deterministic in nature compared to local variation. Global variation distribution for a specific parameter P is different between two processes, here X and Y. There are numerous process parameters similar to P, each having its unique distribution. In combination, they create a unique identity for a fabrication process at device level. So how do we extract that information at the system level? In other words, how to transfer that information from device to system level? The answer lies in circuit design. Here we have taken the input-output characteristic of a power amplifier. The green star shows typical operating point in the linear regime. By designing our power amplifier to operate here, we are suppressing non-idealities due to process variation. Now, if we design the PA to operate at the yellow point here, some non-linearity is introduced. But this non-linearity is a function of various parameters which are subject to process variation. Hence, more process information will be mapped from device level to system level. Here, we are getting process information by trading performance slightly. Alternatively, we can operate the power amplifier at the linear region during normal operation and push it to the edge of saturation, this red star here, during test trip only. So basically, we can operate the circuit in two modes, which is uh, one can be called mission mode, uh, which is detecting the process information in normal operation. Another can be in testing mode where we push the power amplifier output all the way to saturation so that we can get the maximum process information. Figure B shows system level non-idealities due to process variation. This is visible both in transmitted RF wave and baseband constellation, as you can see here. Red and blue shows X and, uh, sorry, Y and X nanometer process respectively. With that, we build the idea of a radio frequency process specific function or RFPS. Here we have two identical transmitters manufactured in different processes. Their process information is embedded in the transmitted wave as system level non idealities, as you can see here, the red and blue. These non idealities can be transferred to the baseband constellation in the receiver. A neural network is fed with the constellation data to make distinction between the two processes. So now the question is, why do we need to find the process information? We already know it from the specification, right? The motivation for this comes from the concept of zero trust architecture, where there is no predefined trust. In such a system, both internal employees and external users need the same rigorous verification. This ensures the integrity and robustness of our network. So this concept of zero trust architecture can be applied to the semiconductor supply chain, which uh, encompasses several countries. Manufacturing is done mostly offshore. Ensuring cross-country supply chain security is a big challenge 
that leads to IC counterfeit. It caused nearly $169 billion loss a decade ago and is currently estimated to be several trillions. Counterfeiting includes recycling, remarking, cloning, tempering, overproduction, etc. Instead of having predefined trust, the zero trust approach can be followed to perform extensive testing and detect most of it. Now, the problem is that the traditional testing, such as X ray uh, microscopy, scanning electron microscopy, SAM, chromatography, Raman spectroscopy, electrical testing, etc., are mostly invasive, time consuming, and already costly. More testing will increase the cost and time exponentially. Hence, we need to extract as much information as possible from non invasive electrical testing. And RFPSF fits there nicely. Using RFPSF, it is possible to check whether the IC was fabricated using the intended process. It is part of the cloned IC detection process. Now that we are motivated about this, the concept of RFPSF, I'll talk about the simulation method. Here, uh, we have seven bit pseudo random bit sequence, which is converted to two parallel bit stream, as you can see here, B0 and B1. These bit streams drive the I and Q path. The transmitter circuit diagram is shown here, as you can see. Same transmitter was designed and simulated in three different processes. 65 nanometer TSMC process, 22 nanometer global foundry process, and also 40 nanometer global foundry process. For a, a particular process, we have simulated this transmitter for all five corners. First, 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 slow, slow, first, slow, slow, and typical, typical. Next, uh, we have uh, sent this data uh, from Cadence to MATLAB, and we have processed it there. So now I'll talk about the data processing step. First, the initial transient in the data, as you can see here, it is removed. So we can see, uh, so the transient contains some information about the process. However, there is difficulty uh, during runtime. Uh, there is difficulty in uh, transient detection. Hence, for this work, we have excluded it for now. We see that after detecting, after discarding the transient, there is uh, a rising and falling is the rising is uh, matches with the reference signal, but the falling is doesn't match as you can see here. So there is uh, so this is due to the DC offset. A slight there is a slight difference in time delta t as you can see here. This creates a small phase difference delta theta, which is picked by the neural network to make a false prediction. Hence we remove this offset and the edges are matched properly and all the waves are then normalized. Uh, the reason for normalization is the supply voltage is different between the three processes. Okay, uh, then the signals are demodulated and filtered using a low pass filter. After filtering, the previous high data rate as, as it was required in a high frequency RF domain is no longer needed. Hence, the signals are resampled at the baseband. Okay, now let's talk about some uh, results. Figure A shows the time domain receive signal for three different processes for first first corner. I have shown the reference sign signal here. In the time domain, we can see process dependent non idealities. Figure B shows the constellation for three processes. Although there is some overlapping, they can be visually distinguished. A neural network is trained with the constellation data and tested. Figure C shows the process distinction accuracy for different neural network configurations. So the accuracy is plotted against the number of hidden layer in the neural network conf configuration, and each color represents the number of neuron in each layer. We see that we have worst case accuracy of 80% and best case accuracy of 99%. In general, the average accuracy is close to 90%. Next, we see the effect of baseband sampling rate. After filtering and mapping the RF signal to the baseband, we no longer need the high sampling rate. But what should the baseband sampling rate be? The figure shows that the accuracy is very low below the Nyquist rate, this red region, which is kind of expected because we are losing information below Nyquist rate. However, at or above Nyquist rate, the accuracy is more than 95% and it increases slightly. Next, another pr practical consideration is ADC quantization. 
So in MATLAB, all the data are 64 bits by default. But practical ADC is 8 or 16 bits in precision for most cases. To see the effect of ADC resolution, we converted the data precision and trained the neural network with it. From 8 to 64 bit, we see that the ADC resolution has very trivial effect on the neural network's performance. So for this range from 8 bit to 64 bit, we can say that the ADC resolution doesn't affect the performance of the neural network that much. Now I will summarize my presentation. In this work, we have proposed RFPS, uh, process variation based process distinction method. Using simulation data from three different processes, 65 nanometer, 22 nanometer, and 14 nanometer, we have shown that RFPSF shows 99% best stress accuracy and 90% average accuracy in process distinction. We have explored the effect of baseband sampling rate and ADC resolution, two practical limitations in the RF receiver chain. Finally, this work provides a low cost, fast, and efficient process distinction method that can help in the fight against IC counterfeiting. That's all in my presentation. I'd like to take this take this opportunity to thank my co-authors, Boibhav Chatterjee, Luke Duncan from KPR, and Professor Sriyashan.